And here we are back at the Persa i3 Mark III printer. Why? Because the heating beds failed. I'm not exactly sure why the heating bed failed, but I'm pretty sure that there's something not connected. Which means it either became disconnected in the heating bed connector over here on the back of the heating bed, or for some reason over here where it connects up. So I'm going to take a look at both of them, see where the connection fault is, and document it all. Hopefully anybody else who's having the problem can play along and fix it a little bit more easily. First step, unplug the printer. With that done, I'm thinking we'll want to flip it on its side and take a look at this first. This being the connector for the power on the bed, looks like that's just the thermistor. So let's crack into the connector and see what we've got there. I don't really like seeing 0.5C on the board unless that's not a version designator. Uh, I think anytime you do a production run and you're satisfied with the product enough to sell it to the general public, you probably want a version, at least version one, because it's your first public release. Designating the first one good enough to actually sell to people. But whatever. <clears throat> they didn't console me. All right. Let's see what we've got under here. So we've got two huge solder blobs. They look like they're making connection okay, unless the traces have come off the bed, which would be unfortunate. Let me get a little bit of Denature, well, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus. There we go. Isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Clean that up a little bit. See if that makes a difference, or at least see if I can get a better idea of what I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, it's some rosin core flux still on the board. Let's plug it in while I've got that open. And I'm gonna need to check the point to point anyway on the cable. So, power her up quick. Just to confirm it's still not working with it open. All right, we're still getting nothing at the bed. Next, I'm gonna pop the case open and check the cable point to point to see what's going on there. First, we have to power it down again and unplug it. So we can access the cables right here, back of the control box. So what I'm gonna do is get the multimeter. I'm gonna to check to see if we've got circuit continuity from the head of the cable here over to the end of the cable where it plugs into the heat bed right here. Plug the multimeter into common and voltage. Got the trusty fluke out. Let's see what we get. All right, here's ground. Is that ground? Yeah. All right, that's a negative pole anyway. Continuity there. Positive. Make sure we're getting a connection here. All right, well. There's an answer. There's a break in the positive side of the power cable, so I assume we're gonna need a new power cable on there for that. That's just a single wrap and should be pretty straightforward. I just need to get the right gauge cable. I will check to make sure that the continuity problem isn't somewhere else. Just double check it, but that seems pretty straightforward. Start with that. Back in a minute when I've got the supplies. All right, so in the case of this printer, what I found out is that there's an intermittent flaw in the positive cable where it's affixed to the printer. Because sometimes, as I did when I tested initially, I will get the uh, positive cable coming up with a connection, and sometimes it won't. So, like, I'm having trouble reproducing it currently, but there's definitely no connection when I hook it up between the two. As you can see, I'm not getting anything right now. So, actually, let's turn it back on audio. There we go, audible. And I can't really get it to, oop, there we are. Ah, those might have just touched. Yeah, nope, nope, so there's the break. It's down near the heat bed somewhere. All right, so I cut the, I cut the connection over here, the little um, zip tie they use. And I also unscrewed both of our connectors spade ends for the uh, connection to that. One thing when you're whenever you're replacing these make sure that you note where they go on the board and put them back in the correct spot. It'll probably just burst into flames if you don't I assume or at the very least blow a fuse. So you probably don't want that. 
And now I've got to go through the tedious task of unwrapping this cable. I'll visually inspect it a little more. If I find a break, I'll show you. Actually, there is one, one point that I'd like to show here. Let's see. All right, there we go. Internally on the box even, if you can see this, it's been wearing a little bit. So that's that's got some motion going on right there where it's rubbing somewhere inside the box even. So it's it's been pulling on this cable. So when I put it back in, when I replace these, as I'm going to do right now, what I'll do is try to figure out some places where I can bind it a little better so that it won't move around at all on the inside of the case or where it doesn't need to move. So I freed the cables from their shackles and I've determined that it's definitely not working. So now I have to desolder those huge solder pillows and get this back to work and let's get it off and see if I can figure out where the fault actually is. Starting off at 400 degrees. I don't know if that's going to be sufficient. We'll see. Oh, wow. That is plenty hot. Okay. Fair enough. All right. That so heh, that soldering iron might not be totally accurate in its temperature or maybe my assumptions are just horrible on where those temperatures would go. But there we are. Now we've got a free cable. I'll have to take it apart and see if I can find some dead sections in it. So I'll go back over to the bench, tear the cable apart, and see if I can figure out what's going on with it. Just a minute. You'd think over the span of four or five months I could actually fix the problems inherent here with the lighting, but you'd be wrong. All right, so here's our culprit. There's our bad cable with the red. Let's separate it out. And... Actually, I'm going to go get the meter too. Might as well have it on hand. So I've got the meter set to make noise if it finds continuity. I've hooked up the cables on both ends. Let me go through and see if I can figure out if there's any portion of this I can flex where it'll start working again. That's strange. Can't figure out where the brake is. Ah. All right. I'm at a loss. Let me see if it's... No, no, it's not the connector either. All right, well, let me strip the cable down. That was weird. All right, so there's clean cable on one side. Clean cable on the other side. Try that again. Maybe there's just a straight long break in there. Right at the end. That'd be weird. I guess it could flex like that though. And there we go. That was indeed the problem. So, looking at it. Let's see, where's that? That first piece I pulled off, right back here, that actually looks like there's a clean break inside in the cable that was pulled quite a ways back. When I took it off with the, just the snips, wire cutters, it actually, it actually did pull off an area with no cable in it, so, yep, definitely got continuity. So that's it. It was a clean break near one end of the cable. I'll have to go back and review it to see which end of the cable. I can't remember now, but I'm sure you just saw it, so it should be obvious. Yeah, so there's obviously a pretty bad design flaw in that. That just broke cleanly, and I don't have that many hours on that machine either. And once I get that fixed, we'll take a look at it again and see exactly how it works out. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but I would assume that for that problem, they probably have something on it. So, until next time.